All right, Annie has a question. I want to be able to provide a phone number to someone who wants to call into the Teams meetings. Well, dial a number for the meeting, not assigning a user a phone number. Where and when does the number appear? So an individual would not be using the Teams app, but dialing directly in. That that number should be generated in when you create the meeting. There should be dial-in information, and in the meeting information underneath the settings menu, we'll tell you what that dial-in information is. Um, but there is also, you have to have the Teams calling, depending on the, the user license. You may have to have, to have a personal phone number that they can call into. You have to have that um, licensing, as far as, yeah. I, as far as I know. Yep. Yeah, you have to have the licensing and anybody who is generating the meeting. So essentially, if you want the person generating the meeting to have a phone number in the meeting request, that license has to be applied to them. You can use, um, they have to have an audio plan, which there is a $0 North American audio plan right now. Um, so you don't have to pay anything for it. You do have to have communication credits enabled, um, although you don't actually have to have any money in there. Um, <laughs> and so basically there has to be an opportunity for that to all turn on. Um, and then that has to be licensed to the users that are going to be generating the meeting for the phone number to appear. There's also a couple configuration steps you have to do on the back end. So you have to go into your Teams Admin Center and in your meeting uh, policy and your meeting information, there's going to be a place to assign a phone number. Um, and Christian, I've put the link in there just for how to, to set all that up. Um, but once it's all set up, then you just have to remember anybody who when they schedule the meeting, if you want that phone number to appear, has to be licensed properly. Yeah. So having a central, like one person or one account that has it is doable. You don't, not mm -hmm. everybody has to have it, but the person that schedules it has to have that number. Correct. Has to have licensing. Yep. And then how does that, I know this isn't what Annie's asking, but if you've got people dialing in from different international regions, um, I mean, would that account cover other international dial-ins or would that be us only if i'm based in the us and that's where my license is no, is it, it based on, on the license holder location it depends on the number that you choose so there are different so you can choose basically a local phone number so what's going to happen is basically anybody within um, the U.S. or North America could call that number at a, it's, I hate to call it an old toll-free thing, but essentially there's no cost for it, but it it's considered an international dial for the people who are dialing in. So actually the cost would be on them. The yeah. other option is you can choose a toll-free, a true toll-free number. And if you choose a true toll-free number, depending on how your team's calling is set up, then you can incur the cost against your communication credit. So you can choose basically when you're setting up that configuration, whether or not you want to cover the cost of anybody outside of your uh, calling plan or whether you want to put that cost back on them. Yeah. I yeah, coming from, something now. <laughs> coming from the, te coming from the uh, telephony world, I mean, that's where I spent a decade of my career uh, and, and understanding that, uh, that a lot of the, uh, you know, would calling within a region, within a country and all, how expensive it used to be, how much of a scam it was. It was like a hundred percent markup oh, yeah. uh, on what they would charge. Um, but when you're dealing with internationals, because you're going through, uh, different CO central offices, you're going through different switches. And so, you know, obviously if you're in the U S and you're creating a meeting and inviting people from other countries, we have no control over what those other offices, what those other regions charge for that transaction, even though, I mean, there's. I mean, it's a hundred percent markup. It's a it's a scam uh, uh, business. To be <laughs> I, I have learned telephony. more about Teams Voice. I I did about this much in telephony, like where it would just kind of come in a little bit. And I had to do some of the software a million years ago, but with all the team stuff and all of the clients that we support um really we've learned tons about teams meetings and teams voice and managing all the configuration behind the scenes to the point where i don't think like i'm a super expert on it but i sure know a heck of a lot more than i did before yep well it used to be that there were just a handful in the us just a, like a dozen companies that were truly experts in unified communications yes and those that would do deployments, but whenever they had actual questions, they'd go back to those dozen companies. And so that's something Microsoft has been really pushing out that that education, pushing partners to take on the telephony side 
of of the business and learn that for for teams and so a lot of incentives for partners to be able to handle um the telephony so yeah yeah i still haven't done it but and i um <laughs> i don't want to <laughs> I'll add in here too. So um, a really great conference I've gone to the last couple of years that I'm doing again this year is Combs Be Next in Denver. Yes. Um, it's all you see. It's all te- it's teams based, but it's all you see. Um, so it's all the voice, it's all the applica- or it's all the applications, but it's also the devices too. Um, it's really exciting because to your point, Christian, like that knowledge has kind of been a li- in this little bubble. And I think the fact that it's getting shared out in a really great way is is it's just worth talking about. Mm-hmm.